feels a little funny uh, to phrase it this way, but I'm the poster child for being queer. I want to talk to the kids. Parents watch the video and then hand the phone over to the young kids. 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 The young. The young. The young. The young kids. 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 The young kids. Hi there. Bring that ass back like a boom, 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 boom. Toxic parent. Thank you for being a kind and good person. And good person. I look like a man. I'm not one. What? 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 Mint picking someone to the nth degree is not If your parent is one of those parents that's not good at parenting, well, I'll tell you what toxic slash abusive parents do. Child protective services. I am being accused of being predatory. Sometimes parents just drop the ball. Why is this an obsession for you? This is the part <clears throat> where we hold a boundary. It will seem unkind, but it's very kind. When are you going to grow up? And the human dignity of people like me. I look like a man to you. <laughs> um, when are you going to join us? Demon, it ain't nothing she could do but pray for me. Hello, I am Jeffrey Marsh, and I am a Vine superstar. I have 150 million views on Vine, and I'm going to talk to you today about being gender queer. Jeffrey Marsh, part two. We're going to take a look at the abuse to abuser pipeline, the effects of TikTok on the brains and lives of children, the cult-like social contagion factor of gender ideology and how people like Jeffrey Marsh are actively grooming children towards this ideology that is a cult of self-harm and how this can lead to self-harm in highly vulnerable populations of children and young people and how men like Jeffrey know exactly what they're doing and employ extremely sophisticated techniques. Uh, also going to talk about his history as a Buddhist monk and how it actually translates into the type of hypnosis that captures the minds and hearts of children. So let's get into it. It's clear that there is toxic masculinity and rigid gender roles is what he grew up in. And this is a very common formula that leads a lot of children, especially LGB children, to then cross over into the TQ+, the transgender queer plus. And to be clear, it is the toxic masculinity that led to the patterns of abuse and homophobia that targeted homosexual, gay, lesbian, and bisexual children. And then it is toxic femininity that embraced them so far that it turned into a ubiquitous movement across the entire Western culture. Additionally, it is toxic femininity that has women like the woman that we saw gathering their children around and literally offering them to these predators in the vein of let's just be nice, just be nice. One of the strongest instincts on the planet is the maternal instinct. And I've heard a lot of childless women say that, no, I don't have a maternal instinct. No, you don't. Because that develops during pregnancy, childbirth, and child bonding. But when you are bonded to a child, 
Absolutely. There is something. You are the one of the most responsive people on the planet to threats to your child. You can recognize a threat to your child before just about anybody else. What this movement is doing it is grooming mothers, grooming women, men, teachers, community members to no longer recognize, identify, and respond to their internal alarm and no longer act on it in the best interest of children so that we can protect the feelings of adults. I wanna to talk to the kids. Parents watch the video and then hand the phone over to the young kids. Hi there, but I wanna ask you um, a favor. If you see a kid like me or an adult like me, would you be extra nice to them? Would you do me a favor and be very, very kind? Um, yeah, like anybody, we can feel lonely. And so if you're kind to us, it would be really, really important. That women, mothers, that, that teachers are choosing just be kind and don't bully. So it's toxic masculinity is the bullying the gay kid. Yeah, we don't do that gay shit. And then toxic femininity is be kind to that adult. He is just hurting. He's a little boy inside who just wants to be loved. Here, here's my three-year-old. <laughs> Feeling like a woman. five-year-old assigned male at birth kid and she went to her dad's this weekend who is you know transphobic so she has to change into shorts before she goes over there because she's not allowed to wear dresses i told her it was time to go change for daddy's house and she ran and got this cute little yellow dress with zebras all over it she seemed really excited to show it to her dad and she had a panic attack when i told her she had to put on shorts I've done a video talking about that woman before, and I, honestly, it's probably time for an update. But that situation is a battle of the toxic femininity and toxic masculinity. It's like, who can be more toxic? And how can we catch this child in between the midst of our, you know, divorce fight? It's so cruel. They're both imposing different variations of toxicity onto this child. And I... I uh, it's really hard to watch. Yes, gender nonconformity is acceptable and should be tolerated. But when you are actively, like, there's a, we've got to figure out this line between what's normal gender nonconformity, but what is actively, um, like, 
effeminizing your son, you know, putting him in pantyhose, putting him in, in inappropriate clothing. Like we are at this crazy shit storm meeting point, perfect storm of toxic masculinity on one side that pushed us into a toxic femininity. We've got to res we got to reset. Hi kids. There is no such thing as you're a girl. You can't do that. Or you're a boy. You can't play with that toy. Parents watch the video the whole way through and then come back and watch with your little ones. A lot of people want to divide the world into boys and girls, men and women, he and she. I'm neither of those things, I'm a they. And one of the reasons that people want to divide the world into only he and she is so that they can judge people, so they can be mean to people, so they can bully people, so they can decide who's better than somebody else. And it's all made up. Please don't let anyone tell you what toys you can play with, what you can wear, or who you can be when you grow up. If that's true, Jeffrey, then why is it that you conflate your wearing of heels, of high heel pumps, with not being a man? If it's not clear already, uh, did you see the shoes? Did the cameras get the shoes? Get a close-up? Um, they're Manolo's. <clears throat> if you did not, yeah. If you didn't notice, my thing is being queer, right? Don't, don't you understand and, and see and hear the circular logic and the hypocrisy? and the mixed messaging. So we were all supposed to just know that you're gender queer and that you're gender fluid and you're non-binary because you're wearing heels. It sounds like you are conflating clothing with sex and gender and ge I mean, none of this shit, stop it. You're a man. How much more powerful would it have been if Jeffrey and Dylan both said, I like these things, I wear these things, but I'm a man, I'm still a man. You know who actually did do that? I just have one question for Mike. What's my gender? <laughs> What's Why? his or have yours? I, I just remember Mike trying to cock block me and Andrew Schultz and wasn't keeping it real. Oh. Wait, did I fuck this up in the past? Yeah. I actually did? <laughs> You're an asshole. Was this at 11? Can you open this for me? Gotcha. No, no, no. No, this was not. He's, I'm just kidding around. Uh, Answer the question. Uh, you, 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 What's you, Jeffrey's gender? You, ide the, you, you identify as, as, as he slash he. Fuck yeah, bro. All right. Was that? <laughs> hey, hey, fuck yeah, bro. Was that right? Yeah, yeah that of course it is. Okay, it's, yeah. way more, it's always well, way more simple whenever, than it ever yeah, but, is. Which I was shocked. I mean, he's a narcissist vanity queen but this I see, I see. oh my god jeffrey yes. i'm a dude i love makeup i love fashion and you know i've been doing this for so long now there's these terms were, did not exist when right, i was a right. kid do you fuck with them or no with what the terms no i right? think i think half of it's fucking stupid i'm just awesome. gonna be real but no one wants to ever say that will you get in trouble for saying it I don't care anymore. You're beyond. But you're, I never cared. Yeah, I've been canceled ten times. You guys talk about cancel culture all the time. Yeah, yeah. I think you're only you're only canceled if you let yourself be canceled. I agree. Like I'm the devil. I killed someone. And we should all go away. What do we do so wrong? So I just think that I just like to always just speak my mind. So the whole culture of everyone saying that they're this and that and that. It's like oh, there's just it's too many labels. Yeah, you killed. Just somebody? be yourself. I didn't physically do it. Oh, my <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and remember, LGB, lesbian, gay, bisexual, all which deal with sexuality, and those are really all the letters, were force teamed with these religious, cult-like, immaterial, spiritual beliefs of the T and the Q. Hand the phone over to the young kids. Hi there. Um, I get asked a lot, are you a boy or a girl? And I love that question. 
Jeffrey Marsh goes by they them. He is genderqueer, not just genderqueer, gender fluid. So as he explains, he mythologically floats and moves in between male and female, man and woman, and everything in between. And so I wanted to just tell you, sometimes human beings are more than boy or girl. Sometimes we're something else. Sometimes we're both. Sometimes um, we kind of float in between, and sometimes we're a boy, sometimes we're a girl, because um, human beings are creatures, and we're wild and exciting. So what it sounds like, he grew up, and his father, as he explains in you know, later recountings, that his father came and told him, listen, I was very ashamed. It sounds like his father was unhappy with having a homosexual son. I caught something, discrepancies in his story, his big story of abuse, told the first time is markedly different than his big story of abuse where he ran away told the second time. I knew it. He's sensationalizing his abuse. I don't doubt that there was abuse. I don't doubt that there was emotional abuse, but I do think he's sensationalizing it and using it to excuse why he wants to do the more insidious things that he wants to do. The abuse to abuser pipeline. Watch. I had an interesting conversation. I had just come out for, uh, for real. When I was 18, I decided everybody, senior in high school, everybody needs to know. And I also shaved my legs for the first time. So here he was 18 when he first shaved his legs and he knows that for sure because he was a senior in high school and he had just told everybody. But then it's a different story in the next one. I wanted to tell you a little tiny story about how I shaved my legs for the first time. I was around 16. Well, when I was 18 was the first time I did it. And I know that I could drive because at the end of the story I, just, I had to run and drive. Um. I shaved my legs for the first time. I used a disposable bic. I shaved the whole way up to my armpits. To, you know, from hip to ankle. I came down uh, from taking a shower and shaving. Because I had to express my gender. You know, from hip to ankle. I shaved the whole way up to my armpits. Hairless, trying. And so it took a very long time. In the shower, uh, it took a long time that first time. And a couple times throughout, my dad knocked on, pounded on the door and was like, something's going on in there. And I was like, nothing! You know, with several eyes, nothing! My dad went ballistic. So I came out and I had, I'm sure, patches of hair and like nicks, um, little, little bits of blood going down my legs, right? Um, probably looked a fright, but I was so happy. And I stepped out and my dad went ballistic and he was wearing his class ring and he hit me and it, you know, made a mark. It was not good. And, um, I ran away. I didn't run away from home, but I, I ran out the door and got in the car and drove away. And I came downstairs and I was wearing shorts and my dad said, what's that? What are those? What'd you do to your legs? And I said, I shaved my legs. I was feeling defiant. And he said, you can't do that. What will the neighbors think? That's not, that's not what boys do. And I said, I am me. I shaved these legs because I want to. And then he started yelling at me and I started yelling back. And we were yelling, 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 yelling. And the whole thing escalated to violence. I don't want you to ever be in that same situation. And stayed away for a very long time. Um, but while my dad I hope this is, you know, trigger warning, obviously. All right, so 
I, he's full of shit. He's 16 for sure in one because he knows because he was driving. He was 18 for sure in the other one because he knows because he was a senior and just came out. You know, one is his dad's pounding on the door and telling him to come out. And obviously the more dramatic one is the second one. It's the one he released like years later. He, clearly the story snowballed over time. It's, I'm sure the the gist of the story happened um but it sounds like they, they were arguing and fighting and i'm sure there was aggression on both sides and again at 18 he's a grown man um and, and you know i've seen men and sons fathers and sons escalate like that that happens i, I don't think that he was this like helpless meek you know lgb child uh, I, I, you know, and I'm sure the dad was an asshole, don't get me wrong, but I really do think that he's using this whole abuse story to justify shit and to get, you know, oh, he's a poor, helpless. It's to throw people off his trails, to make him seem like I'm just this abused little duckling and I'm just trying to save the youth. These people are full of shit. This is why you really got to be careful who you're following who you're listening to. Some of these people are just straight up liars. Jeffrey Marsh got upset because his mother, after he published a book, his mother confronted him. He claims that she said, oh, you're airing out our dirty laundry. I believe, and again, just based on watching his entire body of work, I believe that what happened was that there was a clash and a disconnect because she knows the truth. And I think she was able to call him out on his bullshit. I wanted to tell you another like awful thing my mom said to me when my book came out. And if you're an artist or writer, um, you might be able to relate. I felt all this pressure around writing the book. And I was the first non-binary person to do a memoir, to tell our story on the world stage it was with penguin um and it happened to have sold a lot of copies and so i felt all this pressure and and poured my heart and soul into that book and my mom said how could you air our family's dirty laundry and i had an epiphany recently i'm supposed to own the laundry too i'm supposed to feel bad for dirtying the laundry and it is not mine it's yours. And if you don't want laundry aired, you probably shouldn't have done it. The ways in which he hyper sensationalized his story. Woman, I came out officially when I was 11 years old. Mom and I were on the way home from church. I told her and she careened the car off the road into a ditch and said, you don't know what you're saying. You're 11 years old. You can't talk about stuff like that. But there's no blame. There's no hate for mom and dad. They just didn't have the tools to raise such a fabulous person. It's a little too convenient that his story lines up exactly with the sort of narrative we're always fed. Oh, these kids came out, the father beat them. The and stayed away for a very long time. Um, but while my dad I hope this is, you know, trigger warning, obviously. While my dad was doing what he was doing to me, it felt like he was trying to beat the LGBTQ out of me. Mother didn't accept them. The mom was crying. It was horrible. The dad was super homophobic. And then he came out and he was able to be his true self and everything was better and he wants to save kids from that. I remember being so self hatey that I wanted the violence could like violently take the problem out of me. Um, yeah, I tell those stories so that you don't do that to kids. He is not going to convince people to allow him access to their children if he can't convince them that by not doing so, they are putting their child in danger of severe imminent self-harm. His story isn't as impactful if he doesn't have the ju justification of, oh, I want to talk to your kids because I was a wounded child myself. I don't want you to ever be in that same situation. I knew then, as has become even clearer as the years have gone by, 
I don't need to choose a gender and I don't need to fight for whatever it is in my life that I'm choosing. The problem is we have grown up with a level of entitlement in this generation that if you aren't it, it, this hyper individualism, that anything you say goes. And if anyone tells you no, then they are oppressing you. They are repressing your true self. It has gone way too far. He has. I don't ever need to be aggressive. I don't ever need to convince. I don't ever need to argue. I know deeply within my bones who I am and that who I am is somewhere in between or outside of or with both man and woman. Another thing you guys have to understand is he needs to sell the idea to parents that if you as a parent challenge your child's special identity, that you're abusing them. And that it could escalate to violence, it could escalate to the child running away, it could escalate to the child becoming suicidal. They must convince you of that. If they cannot convince you of that, you're not going to play along. The only way to get otherwise sane, rational, reasonable, caring, committed parents to play along with this fucking bullshit, these fake gender identities, is if you can convince them that by not doing so, you could lose your child. One of the most fucked up things that they love to say is, would you rather a transgender daughter or a dead son? That is emotional blackmail. It is an abusive, narcissistic manipulation technique to control. A lot of detransitioners who I've talked to personally and who I've read say that they when they learned about the suicide statistics of transgender youth and transgender people who don't transition and how it can snowball into self-harm, say that while they previously never considered suicide, never, you know, never had any sort of suicidal ideation, when they would read these, you know, the 41% um, statistic, which again, we know is a trope. It's a trope that has been recycled through because of lazy journalism, poor reporting, and sensationalist headlines that, that are used just to grab the viewer. It's from greedy, journal, greedy, lazy journalism. And what it has done, it has created a, scent, a false hysteria, a hysteria around a false statistic that simply is inaccurate. So, of course, Jeffrey has repeated these tropes because they have been so effective. Parents should stop DMing me saying, what if my kid transitions and then they regret it? <laughs> then they change their mind. Um, why aren't you DMing me to say, what if I force my trans child to be someone they're not until they're 18. He has repeated these tropes that if we don't allow kids to transition, they will commit suicide. If we don't, you know, they'll commit suicide. And again, it's like no one can question that, uh, you know, that th this is happening. Of course, he's putting that out there. It is emotional blackmail. It is manipulation. And it psychologically scars them and future generations for hundreds of years. Why aren't you afraid of making that mistake? And what I find so disingenuous about Jeffrey Marsh is that he scolds parents who, I guess, again, stop writing in to these... Um, to these creators and asking them how to live. These people aren't anybody. 
It's like when people go and comment on Lisa Michelle and ask, like, is it okay if I, if I do this? Is this considered a beauty practice? Stop it. Stop going to Jeffrey Marsh asking him for parenting advice. A, the man has never been a parent. B, the man is clearly dysfunctional, had dysfunctional parents. What the hell model do you think he's going to draw from? But you have these noodle parents who will go and reach out to Jeffrey Marsh and ask them, uh, ask him for parenting advice and say, oh, but what if my, if I allow my child to medically transition early? Well, what if they regret it? And I mean, how angry and frustrated his response was is like, you know, oh, how could you even question that? Jeffrey, you know what's really messed up about that? I know for a fact that had you been a child right now, rather than in the 80s and 90s, you would have been trans as soon as you hit kindergarten. I, 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 I. Do you still have uh, your manhood? Uh, you want to talk about my genitals? Yeah. Yeah, I have a penis. Okay, so, so totally fine talking about that. Okay, so so you still it's have it. So you haven't gone through any sort of transgender transformation nope. with an operation. Okay, gender fluid. And if you had one of these, you know, uber liberal families, you would have been trans. And you know what I know? You are a homosexual man. You're a gay man. And not only are you a gay man, but you like being a gay man. You admit it. I listen. I, I'm, you know, interested in men. I don't date. Uh, you know, people who identify as women. Gender queer, they're considered separate okay. from transgender. So, uh, oh boy, we're running out of time. If, if you, it went, what gets you um, excited? Is it when you see a pretty woman or a pretty man? It's honestly when I see a good looking person that I connect to spiritually. I'm currently with a partner who happens to identify as a man. We've been together for six years. Okay. But that doesn't preclude the fact that maybe tomorrow you would want to be with a woman. Uh, I've never really been attracted to people who identify solely as women. So why not just identify yourself as a gay man? Because I realize that there's more to my gender story. All right, so I, you know, we don't have a lot of time left, yeah. so I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now to tell my audience why... You know that you're a gay man. I know you would be devastated. If you had your penis inverted or if you had uh, undergone puberty blockers and it never developed genitally, stop it because you don't have to go through that and that's wrong. Parents have no right to make those sort of lifelong sterilizing decisions for children. It's wrong. Again, it's like no one can question that, uh, you know, that th this is happening. Of course, he's putting that out there. It is emotional blackmail. It is manipulation. It is to manipulate you emotionally. Show this is so drastic. That's why they can, that's how they justify the claim that misgendering somebody or not playing along is literal violence. And I wanted to thank you for being kind, for being supportive, for standing up in the comments, for being an ally who realizes that the time to be silent is over. Um, I was just about to say it's deadly serious and I didn't want to sadden myself because that's incredibly true. Incredibly true, mental health-wise and violence-wise, it is deadly serious. As they say, well, if you don't play along, you could push somebody to suicide. Fact of the matter is, a lot of kids who are desperately seeking these identities already have pre-existing mental illness. And this is, seeking out gender is a cope. Because when you have celebrities everywhere, when you have doctors who are playing along with it, when you have institutions that are playing along with it, social media influencers who are playing along and saying that when I transitioned, suddenly all of my problems disappeared. Suddenly I felt so much better and I was living my truth and I could be my true authentic self and this is what rescued me. So much of that predicates on two things. One, it predicates that you separate yourself from your family. It predicates that you want to dissociate yourself from the people who really know you, who can really intervene. Because again, these people, people like Jeffrey Marsh know 
the truly caring, concerned parents who know their children well are going to identify saying, you know what, this isn't really you. This isn't genuine. That's not really your past. That's not really your history. Talk about children and adults, both, who are either coming from trauma or a sense of isolation. Everyone asks me, I want to heal from my childhood trauma. How do I get started? There's a really easy way. Tell yourself something kind. And, and maybe feel dejected or rejected, having family issues, tumult. Go online and encounter this, you know, kind of um, immaterial community. And I want you to do that until it doesn't feel awkward. Even if it takes you a decade <laughs> or the rest of your life. Say something kind to yourself. Practice it now. I'll just, I'll just sit here quietly while you, while you say something nice to yourself. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. You could do it a bajillion times and it will get easier. of quote unquote like-minded people and it is so much easier to be supportive of somebody who you don't actually need to participate with. If you need a new family, if you need a family that respects your deepest truth and help problem solve their life that listens to you, that celebrates you, that or support their life in the real sort of day-to-day -day things you're welcome here, in this family, on this page. When you're online, it is so much easier to say, yeah, be who you want to be, that's great, I support you. We will love you unconditionally. I'm glad you're here. When you, them being who they want to be or, or undertaking whatever bizarre identity really doesn't impact your life. But it's so attractive when you feel isolated, when you feel misunderstood. So from what I believe, it sounds like he was radicalized into queer theory at a time when it was really picking up speed. He became popular and Vine famous on Vine. Vine really took off because it's so immediate. An 11 year old boy is going through the popular page and sees the stuff that's generally popular. And then here I come with eyeshadow saying, love yourself guys. And their brain starts to melt. Have the guts to be yourself. The world needs you. When I was a kid, I, I would wear my mom's shoes and run around and be Wonder Woman. It's the same reason why he's got to constantly put in kids' heads. If he can get to the kids first before the parents catch on, because it, it's hard for parents to keep up with the ever-evolving technology. I have a hard time keeping up, and I'm a younger parent. If he can get to you first and convince you, the child, that your parents are messed up and they don't have your best interests at heart. People are fond of saying to me, you can't blame the parents. <laughs> you make these videos and you blame the parents. People can't blame their parents all the time. And my answer is, of course they can. Of course you can. <laughs> if staying in anger, listen to me, if staying in anger and resentment over the way you were treated helps you get a sense of your own worth for maybe the first time in your life, then please be resentful. Most parents are not to be trusted. And parent, and if you even watch a, a lot of Disney movies lately and Pixar movies, it's always about like the parents don't really know what's best for the kid. And the kid knows who they want to be. And the parent's kind of a dope. And, and the kid's got to kind of like break away and find someone who can like help the parent see who the child is. It's this constant new narrative that the parent really doesn't know what's best. The child is who knows what's best. And then some stranger who can help the child. And then that's what he does in saying, oh, don't let your parents gatekeep for you. Your parents can't decide who's good for you and who's not good for you. Well, I'll tell you what toxic slash abusive parents do. They act as a gatekeeper for their child. Meaning the parent decides who's good, who's bad, who we like, 
who's one of us, who's not one of us, who we hate, even to the point of your mom will, t t the mom will tell the child that dad is a bad person, right? And you're supposed to be loyal to the toxic parent and s judge other people through the prism of who's good or bad to that parent. It screwed up. You didn't deserve that. Oh, what? That is like the point of parenting is deciding what's safe and not safe for kids. The fuck are you talking about, Jeffrey? Get the fuck out of my kid's face. I believe that Jeffrey did have pushback from his parents. I also believe that his father probably was abusive. I also believe that that narrative is extremely convenient for Jeffrey to sell his product. And what's his product? Jeffrey's product is this lifestyle that is super unique and special and fancy. That is a cure for troubled teens. It is a cure for children who have body image issues. It is a cure. It is like a magic pill that resolves all the child's issues. He's a snake oil salesman. He is trying to sell a cure, a catch-all cure that could resolve anything that a child is going through. It is so attractive to children to think if I just become somebody else, if I just escape and transform myself, I could live a whole different storyline rather than going and facing and dealing with and conquering the obstacles that I have in my own life as myself. When you can become somebody else, of course that sounds like freedom. Of course, but it is a placebo effect. It is a placebo. The reason why we have a lot of surgeons will tout very high, hap, uh, very high satisfaction rates after medical transition and very low dissatisfaction rates because the rates that they are reporting on are the are the reports that are given at like the six week checkup placebos if i were to give literal snake oil make oil out of snakes and give it to you and I were able to sell you and convince you and show you tables and, and examples of who it worked for and have, you know, actors come and, and explain how well it worked for them. And you were to take it and you were a suggestible person, which again, a lot of these people are because they come in wanting to believe it. You come in wanting to believe it. It is affirmation bias. You will look for any information that will confirm your bias. It is, con I'm sorry, confirmation bias. And again, especially a lot of these children and teens and adults who have invested so much time, money, emotional capital into getting these treatments. And you ask them six weeks later, do you feel better? And, you, and they haven't truly had to live with the impacts. Of course, they are going to say, yes, this is great. I'm living my true self. Hence all the performative post-op reveals where I'm like, oh, wow, I'm so happy. I'm flat. But then when they've had time to live with themselves, when all the initial attention that came all starts to wear off and they actually have to live with what they really did to their bodies, that's when the reality of it starts to set in, that this was a placebo and it wasn't just a benign sugar pill placebo that did neither good nor bad, but it actively did more harm than good. Any time we make drastic changes to ourselves, it, it's exciting and gives you an adrenaline boost at first, but it doesn't last. And we see that in the statistics. We see that as time goes on, people become progressively less satisfied with their surgeries. Men like Jeffrey are snake oil salesmen. They are selling a catch-all pill, and he is selling it to children. This is a man who would have been transitioned as a child 
had he grown up with one of these dipshit parents who sits there and actually shows these predatory videos to their children. These type of loser women who have either very effeminate, weak husbands or no husband at all. These women who can, this is the toxic femininity that no one wants to talk about. But again, when the mother uses children as these emotional crutch, and they're like, oh, look, <laughs> come kids, come, let's go watch Jeffrey Marsh. Oh, wow, this is going to be so happy and healing. The one thing that a father does is he teaches you endurance and strength. The mother is your safe spot. The father teaches you to push forward. Um, he has been asked to participate in a lot of Disney events. Hey. What is it about Glisten's mission that intersects with your personal mission? Why are you here tonight? Well, which is a concern. Another thing that I found out by his mission is that he is involved with certain sort of city planning with the city of New York. In New York City, the MTA, who runs our subways, they've decided to take gender out of their announcements. So when the train conductor or whoever is making announcements in a station decides to address passengers, it'll be done in a gender neutral way. Attention everyone, at the earlier incident. We used to say ladies and gentlemen, and now it'll be something gender neutral, like passengers or hello riders. How does that make you feel? It makes More me feel accepted. included, yes. Exactly. It makes me feel very included. So I am an LGBTQ consultant for New York City, and that means that I talk to politicians and people in the government for the city and the state and help them to understand issues around, particularly, non-binary culture. 